Dr. Carter G. Woodson. We'll be talking about him tonight on Tyrone Bowman Tonight. Before we get started on this evening, if you happen to be passing by and you're viewing this YouTube channel, would you kindly hit like, subscribe, and share. If you like what we're doing with these inspirational, motivational teaching lessons, then we're glad to have you on board. And for those of you that have subscribed to this channel, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to even check us out. We appreciate it very much. On this evening, I'm going to be talking about Dr. Carter G. Woodson, the founder of what we now know as Black History Month. But it's much more than that, and his legacy should receive the type of recognition and honor that he rightfully deserves. But before we get started, let me ask you a question on this evening. Do you believe or do you sense that you have a prophetic call on your life? If so, you need to be mentored properly. And if you are looking for a mentor, well, Higher Dimensions School of the Prophets is for you. They want to hear from you at www.schoolfortheprophets.com. That's www.schoolfortheprophets.com. And when you go to their website, take the time out to send them your email address, and someone will get back to you. That is Higher Dimensions School for the Prophets at www schoolfortheprophets.com. And now we're on to the topic of discussion for this evening, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. The information that I'm about to read, let me let you know now, the, ins the information that I'm about to read, I took the time and to do the research, it is from Wikipedia, okay? We give credit to Wikipedia as we get started on this evening. And this is where the info is coming from. I took the time to do the research and I want to make sure that I'm talking about our brother with the highest of regard and respect. And for those of you who may be just uh, tuning in, I'm Tyrone Bowman, your host for Tyrone Bowman tonight. And this is what is commonly known as Black History Month. Dr. Carter G. Woodson was an American historian, author, journalist, and the founder of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. He was one of the first scholars to study the history of the African dysphoria, including African American history. Now let's get on to the topic of discussion here. Carter G. Woodson was born December 19, 1875, was an American historian, as I already said, author, journalist, and the founder of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. He was one of the first scholars to study the history of the African dysphoria, including African American history. A founder of the Journal of Negro History in 1916, Woodson has been called the father of black history. In February 1926, he launched the celebration of Negro History Week, the precursor of Black History Month. Born in Virginia, the son of former slaves, Woodson had to pull off, put off schooling while he worked in the coal mines of West Virginia. He graduated from Berea College and became a teacher and school administrator. He gained graduate degrees at the University of Chicago and in 1912 was the second African American after W.E.B. Du Bois to obtain a PhD degree from Harvard University. Woodson remains the only person whose parents were enslaved in the United States to obtain a PhD. Most of Woodson's academic career was spent at Howard University, a historically black university in Washington, D.C., where he eventually served as the Dean of the College of Arts and Science. Convinced that the role of his own people in American history and in the history of other cultures was being ignored or misrepresented among scholars. 
Woodson realized the need for research into the neglected past of African Americans, along with William D. Hartgrove, George Cleveland, George Cleveland Hall, Alexander L. Jackson, and James S. Stamps. He founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History on September 9, 1915 in Chicago. Woodson's purpose, as he put it, was to treat the records scientifically and to publish the findings of the world in order to avoid the awful fate of becoming a negligible factor in the thought of the world. That was the year Woodson published The Education of the Negro prior to 1861. His other books followed A Century of Negro Migration in 1918 and The History of the Negro Church in 1927. His work, The Negro in Our History, has been reprinted in numerous editions and was revised by Charles H. Wesley after Woodson's death in 1950. Woodson described the purpose of the ASNLH as a scientific study of the neglected aspects of Negro life and history by training a new generation of Black people in historical research and methodology, believing that history belonged to everybody, not just the historians. Woodson sought to engage Black civic leaders, high school teachers, clergymen, women's groups, and fraternal organizations or associations in his project to improve the understanding of African American history. In January 1916, Woodson began publication of the scholarly journal of Negro history. It has never missed an issue, despite the Great Depression, loss of support from foundations, and two world wars. In 2002, it was renamed the Journal of African American History and continues to be published by the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. Woodson stayed at the Wabash Avenue YMCA during visits to Chicago. His experiences at the Y and in the surrounding Bronzeville neighborhood inspired him to create the Association for the History, the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History in 1915. The Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, now the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, ran conferences published the Journal of Negro History, and particularly targeted those responsible for the education of Black children. Another inspiration was John Wesley Cromwell's 1914 book, The Negro in American History, Men and Women Eminent in the Evolution of the American of African Descent. Woodson believed that education and increasing social and professional contacts among Blacks and whites could reduce racism, and he promoted the organized study of African American history partly for that purpose. He would later promote the first Negro History Week in Washington, D.C. in 1926, forerunner of Black History Month. Pardon me. The Bronzeville neighborhood declined during the late 1960s and 1970s, like many other inner city neighborhoods across the nation and the Wabash Avenue YMCA was forced to close during the 1970s until being restored in 1992 by the Renaissance Collaborative. He served as academic dean of the West Virginia Collegiate Institute, now West Virginia State University from 1920 to 1922. By 1922, Woodson's experience of academic politics and intrigue had left him so disenchanted with university life that he vowed never to work in academia again. He studied many aspects of African American history. For instance, in 1924, he published the first survey of free black slave owners in the United States in 1830. Woodson devoted the rest of his life to historical research. He worked to preserve the history of African Americans and accumulated a collection of thousands of artifacts and publications. He noted that African-American contributions were overlooked, ignored, and even suppressed by the writers of history textbooks and the teachers who used them. Race prejudice, he concluded, is merely the logical result of tradition. The inevitable outcome 
of thorough instruction to the effect that the Negro has never contributed anything to the progress of mankind. The summer of 1919 was the Red Summer, a time of intense racial violence that saw about 1,000 people, most of whom were black, killed between May and September 1919. In the face of widespread disillusionment felt in black America caused by the Red Summer, Carter worked hard to improve the understanding of black history, later writing, I have made every sacrifice for this movement. I have spent all my time doing this one thing and trying to do it efficiently. The 1920s were a time of raising black self-consciousness expressed variously in movements such as the Harlem Renaissance and the Universal Negro Improvement Association led by an extremely charismatic, charismatic Jamaican immigrant, Marcus Garvey. In this atmosphere, Woodson was considered by other black Americans to be one of the most important community leaders who discovered their lost history. Woodson's project for the new Negro history had a dual purpose of giving black Americans a history to be proud of and to ensure that the overlooked role of black American people in American history was acknowledged by white historians. Woodson wrote that he wanted a history that would ensure that the world see the Negro as a participant rather than as a lay figure in history. Woodson wrote, while the association welcomes the cooperation of white scholars in certain projects, it proceeds also on the basis that its important objectives can be obtained through Negro investigators who are in a position to develop certain aspects of the life and history of the rare, which cannot otherwise be treated. In the final analysis, this work must be done by Negroes. The point here is rather that Negroes have the advantage of being able to think Black. Woodson's claim that only Black historians could really understand Black history anticipated the fierce debates that rocked the American historical profession in the 1960s. 1970s, when a younger generation of Black historians asserted that only Black people were qualified to write about Black history, despite these claims, the need for funding ensured that Woodson had served white philanthropists such as Julius Rosenberg, George Foster Peabody, and James H. Dillard, elected to the Board of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and Study without being involved in its work. Some of the white board members <laughs> that Woodson recruited, such as the historian Albert Bushnell Hart and the teacher Thomas Jesse Jones, were not content to play the passive role that Woodson wanted, leading to clashes as both Hart and Jones wanted to write about Black history. In 1920, both Jones and Hart resigned from the board in protest against Woodson. The idea of a Negro History Week was a popular one, and to honor Negro History Week, parades, breakfasts, breakfast, speeches, lectures, poetry readings, banquets, and exhibits were held to honor it. The Black United States and Black educators at Kent State University expanded this idea to include an entire month beginning on February 1, 1970. Since 1976, every U.S. president has designated February as Black History Month. Woodson died suddenly, Dr. Carter G. Woodson died suddenly from a heart attack in the office while, I mean, within his home in the Shaw Washington District neighborhood on April 3rd, 1950 at the age of 74. He is buried at Lincoln Memorial Cemetery in Suitland, Maryland. This is important to note. Let me read that again. Dr. Carter G. Wilson died suddenly from a heart attack in the office within his home in the Shaw Washington, D.C. District neighborhood on April 3rd, 1950 at the age of 74. He is buried at Lincoln Memorial Cemetery in Suitland, Maryland. The time that schools have set aside each year to focus on African-American history is Woodson's, Woodson's most viable legacy. His determination to further the recognition of the black race in America and world history, however, inspired countless other scholars. Woodson remained focused on his work throughout his life. Many see him as a man of vision and understanding. Although Woodson was among the ranks of the educated few, 
he did not feel particularly sentimental about elite educational institutions. The association and journal that he started are still operating and both have earned intellectual respect. And in closing, Woodson's other far-reaching activities included the founding in 1920 of the Associated Publishers in Washington, D.C. This enabled the publication of books uh, concerning black people that might not have not been supported in the rest of the market. He founded the Negro History Week in 1926, now known as Black History Month. He created the Negro History Bulletin, developed for teachers in elementary and high school grades, and published continuously since 1937. Woodson also influenced the association's direction and subsidizing of research in African American history. He wrote numerous articles, monographs, and books on Black people. The Negro in Our History reached its 11th edition in 1966, when it had sold more than 90 thousand copies. And it goes on, I want to talk about some of the honors and tributes to Dr. Carter G. Woodson. In 1926, Woodson received the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, Spargin Metro, known as the NAACP. The Carter G. Woodson Book Award was established in 1974 for the most distinguished social science books appropriate for young readers that depict ethnicity in the United States. The U.S. Postal Service issued a 20-cent stamp honoring Woodson in 1984. In 1992, the Library of Congress held an exhibition entitled Moving Back Barriers, The Legacy of Carter G. Woodson. Woodson had donated his collection of 5,000 items from the 18th and 19th and 20th centuries to the library. His Washington, D.C. home has been preserved and designated the Carter G. Woodson Home National Historical Site. In 2002, scholar Monif Kinte Asante named Carter G. Woodson on his list of 100 greatest African Americans. And as you all know, on February 1st, 2018, he was honored with the Google Doodle. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, a tribute to the founder of Black History Month. I'm Tyrone Bowman. Never surrender. Never quit.